Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk today about cutting an end fed half wave uh, to a certain length and uh, the face palm moment I had. Now our original amateur bands have a harmonic relationship between them. Uh, if you take the lowest frequency in the 80 meter band, 3.5 megahertz, and you look at its first harmonic, 3.5 times 2, is 7 the bottom end of the 40 meter band. The fourth harmonic is 14, the bottom end of the 20 meter band. So there's a harmonic relationship between 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Uh, that was by choice, I'm sure, because that makes it easier to have one antenna that can give you performance on uh, all the bands with minimal hassle, right? And uh, in the past, um, I always had trouble with that. I would cut a dipole for 80 meters, but I still ended up having to use a tuner on maybe on 40, but on 20 and 15 and 10 for sure. And I could never get it to work right. And uh, the same is true with the NFED half wave. Uh, well, it was true anyway, the first time I tried putting one up. Now here's the face palm moment. <laughs> it, harmonics are multiples, right? So the multiple of 3.5, the first one is 7. And it seems to make sense. If you, if you cut it for 80 meters, it's going to work on 40. It's going to work on 20. It's going to work on 15 and 10. Well, it depends on where you make the antenna resonant. Uh, and, and this is the thing that's it's so obvious. I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. And I thought maybe this might not have occurred to a lot of other people. So I thought I'd talk about it. It's all about the harmonics. And let's... Uh, First off, there's a lot of factors that affect an antenna. You can cut an antenna to the proper length for, say, 7 megahertz, put it up, and discover that it's resonant at uh, uh, 6.9 or at 7.4. Um, there's a lot of factors that affect the antenna, how high off the ground it is. It, it, the calculations give you a free space optimal configuration where the antenna is not affected by anything around it. But if you if you have it less than a half a wavelength off the ground, the ground is going to affect it. The type of ground is going to affect it. Is it mineralized? Is it conductive? Is it wet? Is it dry? Um, the configuration of the antenna, inverted V, flat top, vertically oriented, uh, all of these things are going to affect it. So when you cut an antenna to a specific length that should be resonant at say 7.1 megahertz, once you put it up where it's going to be, you're going to have to trim it and tune it to get it back to that point because the other factors around it are going to affect it. But it's good to have a baseline understanding of where you're making that resonant antenna resonant at and how that is going to relate harmonically on the other bands. So what I did was I made a simple little spreadsheet to calculate harmonics quickly and did a little experimenting and um, well, let me show you what I found. Okay, so here's my super simple harmonic calculator. Now, all this does is we put in a fundamental frequency. Let's put in a 2. And, oops. And it shows us uh, the, what the harmonics would be. First, second, third, fourth, and so on. So, let's say that I wanted to cut my antenna for the single sideband portion of uh, 75 meters or 80 meters, however you want to call it. Uh, for 3.9 megahertz, not comma, 3.9 megahertz, right? Which would be the center of the general class portion of the single side band of 80 meters. Pretty common for a lot of guys that I've met to do this. Let's look at where the harmonics fall. Look at this. If we make our antenna resonant at 3.9, the first harmonic is out of the 40 meter band, 7.8. 20 meters, we're way out, 15.6. 15 meters, 23.4. <laughs> and 31.2 for 10 meters. That's what screwed me up early on. It didn't occur to me to look at the numerical calculations for the harmonics to see what was going on. So if I cut my antenna to be resonant uh, on the 80 meter single sideband area, I'm going to have to use an antenna tuner for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. Um, 
So like, what if I cut it for the bottom end of the 80 meter band? Well, we know where this is gonna, we know where this is gonna have, fall, right? If we do 3.5 megahertz, then our first harmonic is, is seven, 14, 21, and 28. Um, so this, this antenna would work pretty well on all the bands without a tuner, provided you operate at the low end of uh, frequency-wise of the 80 meter band. So in this scenario, if I wanted to operate single sideband, um, I might need to tweak some of these bands with a tuner a little, maybe not. The antenna is probably going to be wide enough bandwidth that I won't have to. So is there a compromise? Um, what if we cut it for 3.6 megahertz, all right? What would that do to us? Well, uh, we might still have to use the tuner for 75 meters. Um, and, you know, if we wanted to get up to around like 3.8 or 3.9 megahertz. Uh, 40 meters, we'd be resonant at 7.2, which is, you know, up there near the single sideband portion. Uh, 20 meters, we're getting out of band again. 15 meters, yeah, 10 meters, we'd be okay. Um, yeah, but we still have to use a tuner. 10 meters is so broad, you'd probably have to use a tuner anyway. So that might be a compromise. Uh, what I would do is I would cut it for 3.55, and I'll show you why. There we go. Um, if I cut my antenna to be resonant at 3.55 megahertz, again, on the 80 meter band, if I want to operate up in the general class single sideband portion, I might need to use the tuner. But that's the only band and the only condition where I might need to use the tuner. Uh, the antenna is going to be broad enough that I can probably operate anywhere on 40 meters and be under 2 to 1, probably on around 1.5 to 1 at the maximum. Um, 20 meters, again, I could probably operate just about anywhere in the band and be fine. 15 meters, I eh, might need a tuner if I'm down at the CW portion. I might not. It's, it's really close. And uh, 10 meters, I fall right on the single sideband calling frequency. Look at that. So yeah, thinking about the harmonics can uh, help you decide how long you want to cut your antenna and where you want to make it resonant. So yeah, obviously, um, those harmonics are gonna gonna fall where they're gonna fall depending upon multiples of what your your baseline is. So what's the best choice? Well, it depends on how you operate. Uh, I know a lot of people that I've met that they just sit on the upper si single sideband portion of 75 meters, 80 meters, or whatever you want to call it. You know, around 3.8 to 4 megahertz, and that's where they like to be. They 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 have nets they check into. They have friends they sit there and talk to, and that's all they want to do. You know, and if that's the case, by all means cut your antenna to be resonant at 3.9 megahertz if that's the band you're primarily going to operate at. When you go to the other bands, you're going to have to use an antenna tuner. But if you're, if you're only going to those other bands rarely, then so what? But if you're putting up that antenna and you want it to be the most flexible and the most usable on all of the bands because you like to hop around depending upon propagation, then maybe cut it for 3.55 megahertz. And you might have to use a tuner when you want to operate on the single sideband portion, 3.9, you know, 3.8 to 4 megahertz, um, the general class single sideband portion, most popular. Uh, you might have to use an antenna tuner there, but on 40, 20, 15, and 10, you're going to be able to operate without a tuner. And, and so, you know, it depends on how you operate, how you decide to cut your antenna. But think about those harmonics when you're doing so. Uh, right now I have a 40 meter end fed half wave up and I cut it to be resonant at 7.1 and I have found that I can use it on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters without a tuner and actually sometimes on 6 depending upon where I'm at on the band. Um, and I, I, you know, I just don't have to use the tuner. I don't have to introduce the, the little bit of loss that you get through an antenna tuner uh, and I get the best performance. So you know that worked for me. Works great. On 40 meters, since it's so close to the ground, it's about 23 feet at the apex in an inverted V with one leg about uh, 11 feet off the ground and the other leg about 6 feet off the ground. Um, and that's too close to the ground for 40. I did a VNA sweep of it and you can see here that it's, it's low Q, it's very broad, but it's an operable SWR. It's, uh, it's below 1.5 to 1 at the, well, it's right around 1.5 to 1 at the lowest point. 
and um, doesn't rise too much at the ends of the band. So I can still use it on 40. It's just mostly N-Vis, you know, mostly vertical incidents and, and narrow footprint. But I've been able to check into nets and talk to people up in Washington and out in Texas and, you know, cover some distance. I'm just not going to do DX on 40. But it works really well on, uh, on 20, on 15, and when, when 10 is open on 10. So, you know, I, that was my goal, was to get one antenna up that I could operate on without having to fiddle with the tuner and just turn the radio on and, you know, find somebody and, and talk to them. Uh, and that worked out really well. So if I had cut it for the single sideband portion of 40, by the time I got up to 10 meter, 15 and 10 meters, I probably would have been out of band by calculating those harmonics. You know, I would have known ahead of time that that was the case. So, so there you go. Um, I hope you found that information useful and uh, maybe we'll see you on the air. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.